Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are continuing with the series Vector Algebra and today's topic of discussion is Overview and Physical Significance of Stokes Theorem. Stokes Theorem is an important theorem of Vector Algebra and today we will try to clarify the physical and mathematical significance of this particular theorem. Initially, we should know what is the mathematical expression for this particular theorem and where this theorem is actually applicable. So this is the mathematical expression of the Stokes theorem. We'll come into details, but initially let us try to understand its applicability. It is applicable on any arbitrary surface for say this S surface that is there in a vector field. Suppose if we look at this particular diagram, this is a three dimensional space where X, Y and Z directions are three Cartesian coordinate directions which are mutually perpendicular to each other. We all know about this three dimensional Cartesian coordinate system and that's why I am not going into the details of this coordinate system. However, you try to visualize that there is a plane say S which is not parallel to any of the standard plane, say XY plane, YZ plane or ZX plane. This plane is making certain angle with all the standard plane, say XY, YZ or ZX. That basically means in a layman language, this plane can be arbitrarily oriented in any of the directions. And this particular plane may be irregular in shape, that means Suppose you have a particular piece of paper and you just you, 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 you just try to make any shape of that particular paper by putting certain force at the middle or at a particular corner. That means a particular piece of paper can take any irregular shape if you just play with this particular paper and that on that particular paper also you can apply Stokes theorem. In a vectorial language, on that particular paper or on that particular surface, you may have different directions of the, the or different n. n means the direction at a particular point, say, or a particular small area. Suppose this is S is the bigger area and we have taken a smaller area and we are looking into the direction of that smaller area. So if you have an irregular paper or irregular plane on every point, if you take a small area, those n might be different. So the thing you have to understand is this n might not be same in all the points on the surface S. It could be different. When it becomes different, the point where you have an irregular surface, then it is different. Now coming to the mathematical expression, so this is a curl of a vector say A multiplied by ds, where it, what is ds? This ds is the small area where we know the direction of the plane say n direction. Why we are having ds? Because I have just said that this plane could be irregular that means at different points you might have different n and that's why we have taken ds. So this is a generic expression and then what you do? Then you take a surface integral over this particular surface and this surface integral is equated with a line integral over a closed space. Now if you take any particular area that might have a particular boundary. Suppose this arbitrary area we have taken this is S. So this is covered by this for this is guided by this boundary which is shown in blue color. If you can see this the boundary is here. So the line integral has to be taken along this boundary and the surface integral or this integral has to be taken on this particular surface. So this is the very layman, I mean in a layman language I can explain this is how the line and the surface integral is equated 
and in the surface integral you have to take a curl and in the line integral you have to I mean this is the line integral the surface integral is equated with the line integral now let us do a simple assumption and then a simple mathematics suppose for the time being for understanding let us consider this plane is situated on a particular standard plane that could be I mean one of the special situation and we can just for for our understanding we are thinking this ds plane is lying on xy plane okay that means this is sitting here so on xy plane any vector will obviously be a function of only x and y and there will be no z directions what does it mean that means the vector component of z or k would be zero and we have taken that now further if we explain more like suppose you have a vector which is like this only moving in the or pointing in the x axis that basically means it's a function of only x if you have another vector which is pointing parallel to y axis that basically means it is only a function of y however if you have a vector which is inclined with both the axes to represent that particular vector you should have a function which is a function of two independent variables those are x and y why am i telling this just to visualize this particular this particular vector will have no ddy or dodo y so the the dodo y is zero so here i have shown for this one dodo y of a x is zero for the vertical one dodo x of a y is zero because it is pointing in the y direction it's a function of y only so the partial derivative with respect to x would be zero similarly this is pointing in the x direction and only and that's why partial derivative with respect to y is zero however this particular thing will have a non-zero dodo x and non-zero dodo y and the difference between these two might be zero might be non-zero depending upon the magnitudes of dodo x and dodo y so these things will be helpful for our understanding of stokes theorem that's why we are explaining in a stepwise manner now the curl is written like this and we all know that is i j and k those are the unit vectors along x y and z axis if you are considering cartesian coordinate system and those are operator dodo x dodo y dodo z for x y plane we have only a x and a y so only the k term is surviving and it has a i mean the magnitude of the vector is dodo x of a y minus dodo y of a x two things i just want to explain once again that is curl of any vector is giving you another vector and mind it it was the vector was lying on x y plane but the curl you can see is lying in the k direction that is perpendicular direction to x y plane we have already discussed these things in our video on curl so you can go to that video we'll be putting that video in the description box so you can understand curl in a better way but just to recapitulate this particular curl will be pointing in the k direction and the magnitude will be this now the ultimate thing is whether this this term i mean this uh, term within the bracket it is zero or non-zero so we'll be coming to that in the next slide now i have already mentioned that the surface integral has to be taken over the surface and the line integral has to be taken along the periphery of that particular bounding surface suppose this is the bounding surface so we are taking a line integral along the arrow lines which are given in the pink and uh, by pink arrows so this is the direction of the line integral so mind it this is the line integral and whenever you are taking a line integral you should either going along clockwise direction or on anti-clockwise direction that that we can decide or we can just fix it so for this one 
we are going along anti-clockwise and for all the cases whichever figure we have taken we are going in the same directions now from our curl video we have understood that if a vector field is looking like this then it does not have any curl that we have already explained so if it does not have any curl and we have this explanation from our video which is on curl so we already know this does not have a curl or it's a zero curl so this part is zero so obviously the right hand side has to be zero because both the sides should be equal now let us look at whether the right hand side is zero or not so we start from here so you just look at here so the vector fields are going in this direction say so this is x axis x direction and the vertical is y direction so the direction of the vector dr so this pink arrows indicates direction of this so this a dot dr so if the dr is moving in this direction so both are in the same direction so it would be positive and it will be having some magnitude because both are in the same direction we know dot product of similar directions exist exist and orthogonal directions cancel each other so in this case these are parallel so a dot dr will exist and why it is positive because both are going in the similar directions now if i look at this uh, i mean this part of the closed line so here what happens the vectors are orthogonal to this particular pink lines and hence two orthogonal vectors dot product is zero so this part has a dot dr is equal to zero now we come to the upper part if you see the vectors and the direction of the pink arrows are in the opposite direction so a dot dr will exist but it will have a negative value and you can see the magnitude of a dot dr at the bottom will be equal to the magnitude of a dot dr at the top because both looks like similar so it cancels each other because the bottom one had positive value and the top one has negative value so it cancels each other and it becomes zero further along this line again orthogonal conditions and that's why a dot dr is zero so the line entire line integral becomes zero so it does not have any curl and the line integral is also zero so we can see these two are related both are satisfying both sides have zero now if it is zero we have already we have only talked about the line integral but uh, this curl is zero let us try to visualize physically why the curl is zero because see for for the i mean this this particular curl has this components dodo x of a y minus dodo y of a x now in order to make it zero what there are two conditions either both of this are zero say dodo x of a y zero and dodo y of a x zero or they have some magnitude which are equal and then they cancels each other for this particular can condition those two are zero let us try to understand so dodo y of a x is zero y because the vectors are along the x direction so any derivative with respect to y is zero and there is no a y because the vector, no vector is pointing in the y direction so obviously dodo x of a y would be zero so these two terms this term and this term both are zero for this particular case and this is why the curl of a is zero and these two are equated now we come to this figure so what is happening here in middle we can see there is certain rotation so this arrow lines you can see those are being rotated so all those things are being rotated so here initially we will think of the line integral so again we go in the similar direction now you can see the vectors are in the opposite direction so it would be a dot dr would be negative 
in this case again vectors are in the opposite directions here it is not orthogonal it is parallel and that's why it will have certain value and these two vectors are in the opposite direction that's why a dot dr is negative in this case again you can understand a dot dr is negative uh, vectors are going opposite direction similarly here also so in all the lines we have a dot dr negative so the closed line integral of a dot dr along this along this closed line is negative so it is not zero so if it is not zero and if it is negative then the curl should also not be zero it should have existing dodo y of ax and dodo x of ay let us try to understand it so you can see when the vector rotates so it's it should be inclined at some point at least otherwise it cannot rotate so whenever these lines or the vectors are inclined so obviously in those cases they will have dodo y of ax and dodo x of ay and if those things have certain values then this this term dodo x of ay minus dodo y of ax might be non-zero because it has existing values so the difference might be non-zero so this i mean from this video we are actually trying to understand the essence of stokes theorem so we are not going in the quantitative estimation just to tell you in which situation the curl exists the dot product exists and what is their relation between these two so we understand that these two derivatives are non-zero and hence there is a possibility of non-zero and we have seen this part is non-zero negative so this part is non-zero so there might be an equality again another thing so yeah this was in rotation in the clockwise direction we have taken another example say this is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction so here you can see this i mean we are looking at the line integrals again so again vectors and pink line same direction so a dot dr positive again same direction a dot dr positive so in all those lines we have a dot dr positive so one thing to note here is in this case for clockwise rotation a dot dr was negative and this case for anti-clockwise direction the a dot dr is positive so you can understand if you have a clockwise rotation then the curl which is there and if you have anti-clockwise the curl will have opposite signs so again in that case you have existing dodo y of ax and dodo x of ay because somewhere it is rotating so it will be curling it will be having an oblique value so it will be function of x and y so this there is a possibility of non-zero this term and that leads to your existing this part so another example we have taken here there are more rotation but here in the upper and lower part there is little rotation but the middle part is rotating so what will happen for the upper and lower part there will be no curl but for this particular part there will be curl and there will be line integral existing so just to just to visualize it for this one if you see yes for this particular one both are moving in the opposite directions and that's why a dot d are negative here also a dot d are negative because moving in the opposite direction so you can see what is happening i mean what is the difference between these two figures in this particular figure what was happening all the lines were in pointing in the same direction but here the upper part is moving in the forward direction but the lower part is moving in the backward direction and that's why a dot dr is negative at both the side whereas in the initial case one was positive and another was negative and it was cancelling each other but here is the different physical scenario in that case a dot dr exists at the same time uh, your curl is also exists because when it is moving in the in the forward direction and the lower part is moving in the backward direction at some point of time it might have changed its direction so 
there should be certain rotation and we have shown that rotation by this middle portion so at this middle portions you have existing dodo x of a y and dodo y of a x and there is a possibility of non-zero existing this and in all those cases we have existing values and those values we are equal so again i'm telling in this video we are not we cannot understand quantitatively that those two parts are equal but we understand the physical significance in which cases those parts will be negative positive or non-zero values so when we will be talking about the derivation of stokes theorem then we can have quantitative estimation so there will be a follow-up video uh, on this so stay tuned and i request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates thank you